Welcome to the world of cane breeding, a rare event, a rare opportunity, a unique experience. Sugar Research Institute of Fiji is committed to producing new and improved cane varieties which it does so at its Nombulevu breeding station in Ra. The cane breeding process begins early in the morning with lights switched on at 4.30 a.m. to facilitate pollen collection from male flowers which are kept in the poly shed. These males are used for poly crosses. The male or female combinations are decided after doing flower survey after which the male flowers are harvested. The specific cross labels are tied on the cut female stalks if it is going to be used for biparental cross whereas male tags are tied on the stalks which will be used either for polycross or in biparental or lantern crosses. The leaves are trimmed and the two or more of the stalk is tied and taken to the crossing shed. For polycrosses are put inside a temporary tent. The male flowers to be used for biparental crosses are tied together with female flowers and put in the crossing lantern. The lantern prevents contamination by pollen from male flowers in adjacent lanterns the field. In case of polycrosses only the male flowers are harvested and put inside the crossing shed. Early in the mornings pollen is collected from the male flowers using a large glossy paper which is enclosed around the flowers. The flowers are then tapped to allow for the pollen to get collected on the paper. The male flowers are put in designated groups decided by the plant breeder and the pollen from these specific groups are dusted to assign female again decided by the breeder which are in the field. The pollination process involves identifying the variety in the field which has been labeled a day earlier. The flowers are wiped using towels to remove any moisture on the flower and then the pollen is put on the flower either by using a brush or directly pouring it over the open portion of the flower. No direct pollination is done for the biparental crosses in the lantern. They are just tapped few times to allow pollen from the male flowers to fall onto the female flowers. After some time, the lanterns are opened. The netting bags are put over the female flowers after five to seven days of pollination and the seeds which are referred to as fuzz are collected into it as they mature and fall. A specific mix of acid referred to as Hawaiian acid solution is used to preserve a harvested stock used in lantern crosses as well as polycrosses. The fuzz is then processed and sent over to Rarawai where it is put into dehumidification chambers before being packed and stored for sowing later. The fuzz is sown using sterilized soil which is filled in trays. The fuzz is spread on these trays and a film of additional soil is put over the fuzz before applying water and pressing it down gently. These trays are then watered and transferred inside the germination chamber. After seven days, the germinated fuzz are taken out and put outside for hardening and growth into seedlings. These are then transplanted in trays 
and put inside a greenhouse for further hardening and growth before eventually planted in the field for further evaluation and work. Plant protection plays a vital role for sugar industry in preventing, controlling, and eradicating pest infection of sugarcane. Diseases have generally been kept to low levels in Fiji. Fiji leaf gall disease was identified as a major disease in the 1800s and still considered as a vital disease for sugarcane in Fiji. Fiji disease is caused by Fiji disease virus which is spread by infected leaf hopper. Diseased plants have galls on the underside of the leaf blade. As the disease progresses, stock development slows down, leaves become shorter and dark green in color, and grass like stools. Fiji disease is still active in some sectors and active control programs are necessary. Resistant varieties are critical for control of Fiji disease. Screening for Fiji disease is part of breeding program where clones from stage 3 of breeding program are screened and provided a rating. This year, 58 clones will be tested from breeding plots. This is done using leaf hopper. The leaf hopper is allowed to reproduce on diseased plants in a controlled environment. This is collected and released on the clones to be tested in the insectary. Varieties that do not develop symptoms on the Fiji disease is then selected for the next stage. Sugarcane plants are affected by termites which is currently confined to Lotoka district. Sugar Research Institute in collaboration with Biosecurity Authority of Fiji have stringent monitoring and management programs in place to control spread of termites. While chemical control methods are being tested, strict measures such as movement of seed material is refrained from and within Lotoka district to uninfected zone. An integrated management approach is necessary to control further spread of termites. Cane grub is another pest that damages the roots of sugarcane. Grubs as a G-shape with whitish body and grayish black. The sugarcane grub has four stages, eggs, larvae, pupa and adult, which is a beetle. The larvae burrows into the soil and leaves at 30 to 40 centimeters depth feeding on the roots of the sugarcane plants. In severe cases, it damages the root system. The affected cane roots turns black, spindle or new leaves are wilted, affecting germination leaving patches in the field. Control measures for grubs include thorough land preparation, light trapping, chemical controls and hand picking larvae from the field. Sugarcane smut is one of the most important diseases of sugarcane worldwide. Its occurrence leads to discard of many commercial varieties. Fiji is the only sugarcane growing country that does not have smut. Smut is easily recognized by the formation of black whip that is of pencil thickness. It is silver grayish black in color and powdery. The institute has developed a contingency plan to confront smart outbreak should it reach Fiji. A smart technical committee has been formed with relevant stakeholders. Shreve continues to send local varieties of sugarcane to Sugar Research Australia for screening. Through ongoing technology transfer programs, awareness on the disease and importance of keeping more than a single variety is advised to growers. Management of pest and disease effectively is critical for economic development of sugarcane.
The transfer of controlled sterile environment to a surrounding with unpredictable temperature and humidity. When plants are transferred from a controlled atmosphere to the uncontrolled environment, it cannot be directly exposed. Therefore, before planting commences, the well-developed plantlets are taken out from the lab to the nursery and kept under shade for three days so the plants are exposed to the ambient conditions of the outdoor environment while still in the glasses, having 100% humidity which is provided by the polytunnel covered with a shade cloth. On the third day, planting should commence. IBA and binomial is applied to prevent fungal attacks. Brown wilting leaves are removed. Agar from the roots is thoroughly washed off. The plants are trimmed and separated into single plantlets. These plantlets are planted in trays containing potting mixture of compost, topsoil, and mill mud with a ratio of 2 is to 2. Humidity is maintained by keeping the trays in polytunnel with support for 10 to 12 days or until the first new leaves emerge. During this period, fertilizer application and watering is done as per requirement. To harden the plants, the seedlings are retained in the greenhouse for an extra 30 days to expose the plants to the sunlight. Field preparation involves deep plowing and harrowing to give a fine tail. The fields are irrigated, followed up with a basal dose of blend A fertilizer, which is applied before planting at a spacing of 60 cm between plants and 1.5 meters apart for good tailoring. Plant adopt well in the field after 2 months, 4 months, and after 8 months with 9 to 10 tillers the plants are ready for seed cane material. Technology transfer is a critical function in delivering research outcomes to the farmers and millers. The success of the scheme assumed to bring about a long-term commitment and collaboration between growers, research scientists and extension personnel in assisting growers to adopt best management practices in order to raise gain and sugar yield on their farms. Under the Technology Knowledge Transfer Program, the following activities are undertaken. Establishment of green manure trials, establishment of grower demonstration trials, field information days, media publications, seed cane production, and tissue culture. Sequence of activities under technology transfer, fellow management and establishment of plant crop. Good fellow management improves soil biology and soil structure and should result in increased yields of 15 to 30 percent in following plant and return crop. Soil sampling before planting cover, green manure crops, liming if needed for land preparation and planting of green manure crops. Incorporation of green manure crops in the soil. Establishment of hot water treated seed cane mother plots or distribution plots. An approved seed scheme provides cane growers with disease free seed of varieties that are true to type. Disease-free seed, stalks, billets, set, or tissue culture plantlets used for planting is a key control measure for systemic disease of sugarcane, including ratoon, stunting disease RSD, leaf scald, Fiji leaf gall, smut, chloratic streak, and mosaic. Use good quality seed cane and choose minimum 10% increase in yield in the following plant and return crop. Timely weed control, pre-emergence and post-emergence application. Timely fertilizer application, application of blend B at recommended rate and time. Return management. 
This involves the application of urea at 5 kg in 300 liters water per hectare within 24 hours after harvest to enhance trash decomposition. Timely weed control, gap filling and recommended fertilizer which is blend C application after 4 to 6 weeks. Field information FFS days. These events are facilitated by Sugar Research Institute of Fiji to share results of new technologies that are demonstrated through establishment of grower demo trials and former field schools plot.